Eric Crosswhite, only on KSN Local News. Now, from the KSN Storm Center, your local weather authority, this is your forecast first. Good evening. It's been an absolutely beautiful weekend. Temperatures have been fantastic with mostly sunny skies. We are in for some changes now, though. We are going to see more cloud cover as we head into the week with a warm up. Temperatures will be getting uh, back up uh, above average. We have dry conditions on our Freeman Health First Alert Doppler radar, but cloud cover beginning to roll in. The clouds will be with us tonight and through the day tomorrow, keeping things mostly cloudy. Temperatures a bit more mild, and as we continue into the week, we'll keep warming up. I'll have details in a few minutes. Minutes. KSN Local News at 10 starts now. Now in high definition, local part of your community. This is KSN Local News at 10. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jessica Shear. Corley has the night off. The Miami Police Department is actively searching for a missing Miami high school student. 15-year-old Cheyenne Wilson was last seen by her family on September the 29th. Wilson is 5 foot 7 feet tall, between 125 to 130 pounds, with blonde hair and wears glasses. Anyone with any information on Cheyenne's whereabouts is asked to contact the Miami Police Department. And that phone number is 918-541-2304. A recent motorcycle and lawnmower theft outbreak hits Galena. KSN's Corley Peel tells us how one family became a victim of the crime. Do we just want him back? Ryan Parker was at his parents' house in Galena last week when he noticed three of the motorcycles that were handed down to his sons from their late grandfather had been stolen from their shed. Well, you can't find parts for the bikes anymore, and these bikes are significant to my sons because it's what they have from their grandfather and now they're gone. It makes me pretty angry. It makes me sad. They were one of the few things I have to remember my grandfather. And they've been around ever since I was born, pretty much. Parker is one of several citizens who have had their motorcycles or lawn care equipment stolen from their locked residential garages or sheds. It's been uh, over the last couple of months. Uh, the, the last two has just been within this last week. Officers say two separate incidents of four stolen motorcycles and a lawnmower have been reported in the last week. In the past, we've had them hit and miss, but having them this close together, it kind of makes us think maybe someone is out actively looking for places to steal the motorcycles and lawn care equipment. At this time, officers say they haven't recovered any of the stolen items, but Parker is putting out a $500 reward for anyone with information regarding his stolen bikes. If the bikes were to show up here in my parents' driveway where they were taken from, that we would take down the reward and there'd be no questions asked. We would just be grateful to get the bike back. Reporting in Galena, Corley Peel, KSN Local News. Anyone with any information regarding the recent theft should contact the Galena P Police Department and also officials encourage residents with motorcycles or lawn care equipment in their outer buildings to keep the serial numbers, take pictures, and make sure locks are secure. A softball game in Joplin collects food items and raises money to help put an end to hunger in the four states. More than 65 people played in the second annual Joplin Employee Resource Group Charity Softball Tournament at Redden Field. The game was sponsored by the league at AT&T and each person who played donated a food item or made a financial donation to the We Care of the Four States organization. The group helps feed more than 300 families per month and people who played in today's softball Ball games say it's good to give back. Really, I think it's just being able to see all of our employees come together, donating all of their time. Most of us are going to be here all day, so that's um, 10 hours today that we're just we're going to be out here volunteering all of our time to the community. The greatest thing about this is the fact that we know that they're doing it fun. It's a good way. It's it's a very good way to do it. Just be doing it in a fun way. The league at AT&T hopes to open this game up to the public in the future. And if you would like to donate to We Care of the Four States, you can find their contact information through a link on our website. Just log on to fourstateshomepage.com. U.S. Senator Jerry Moran says there is no numbness to the mass shooting tragedy in Oregon last Thursday. The Kansas representative was reacting to President Obama's statement after the shooting at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon that killed 10 people. 
President Obama says mass shootings are happening too often and the country is becoming numb to the incidents. Now, Moran agrees these shootings are happening too often, but he says it's something that touches us all and it's a reminder we need to have better morals and values. We've got to understand the difference between right and wrong and from a public policy point of view, need to make certain that uh, mental health services are available to people who clearly have something uh, uh, not right with them that they would kill someone else. The shooter was one of those killed in the incident on Thursday. Kansas officials begin to remove some people from the voter registration records due to new state identification laws. Since 2013, Kansas has required new voters to provide birth certificates, passports, or other U.S. citizenship documents. More than 31,000 voters from Kansas will be removed from voter records because they have not proven their citizenship before they can vote. Ten states require voters to provide a photo ID at the polls. Kansas, along with Arizona, Alabama, and Georgia, all require proof of citizenship to be able to vote. If you are thinking about adding a new member to the family this month, you could consider a furry friend from a local shelter. The month of October is National Adopt a Shelter Dog Month, and the Southeast Kansas Humane Society has 90 dogs that are available for adoption. The organization's promotional director says there is a misconception about shelter dogs, though, so finding a permanent home for these dogs is more important than you think. You know, when a dog finds a home, it's the best feeling in the world. It, we just, we want them to, the shelter life is not the best, the ideal life for any animal. We want them to find those forever homes and be treated like a member of the family. For phone numbers and addresses for the Southeast Kansas and Joplin Humane Societies, you can log on to our website for stateshomepage.com. The Joplin Recycling Center is now accepting irises. Iris bulbs are the city's official flower, and now citizens can drop off or retrieve iris bulbs during recycling center hours. Dividing iris bulbs is recommended by the center to prevent overcrowding and to promote more blooms. And some of the guidelines for digging up the bulbs include having one or two leaf fans for each division, write the name and color on the leaf with waterproof marker, wrap the bulbs in newspaper, and then discard the old mother plant or any unhealthy bulb with few white feeding roots. Well, coming up, meteorologist Stacey Garvilla will have all the weather details you need to start your work week. But first, thousands of Honda vehicles are being recalled to fix a software problem. What you need to know, that's next when KSN Local News at 10 returns. Now in high definition, this is KSN Local News with Philip Mitchell, Jessica Shear, meteorologist Stacy Garvilla, and Eric Annette. We are KSN Local News. And now from the KSN Live First Alert Doppler Storm Center, weather with meteorologist Stacy Garvilla. Welcome back. It's been an absolutely gorgeous weekend, and we have a picture to show you that was actually taken today in Carthage, sent in by Karen Willis. It's a beautiful Atlas Safe Room weather picture, just a couple of high clouds in that photo. Karen, thank you for sharing that picture. Now, we do have more cloud cover working into the area right now. We started the morning, though, with mostly clear skies, and our temperatures got a cool start once again, 10 degrees below normal. We started out at 42 degrees this morning in Joplin and really we've been in the lower 40s for the last couple of days. So these temperatures that we've seen overnight and during the day are going to start warming up into the next couple of days. Highs today ranged quite a bit. We actually got a high of 59 degrees in Springfield. 68 is where we topped out in Joplin. 73 though in Parsons and Coffeyville. So temperatures much warmer in our western locations. These areas saw a lot more sunshine today. We had some of those low stratus clouds in some of our far eastern counties. So that's the difference in in those temperatures. Now, if we look back over the last seven days, you can see that we had temperatures in the mid 80s for highs, 60s for lows. We quickly fell back down to the mid to upper 60s for high temperatures, and our lows have been in the lower 40s. Now, this is the type of weather that you want to get to start seeing that fall color. You need those cool nights. You need the sunshine during the day, and of course, when you uh, have the shorter days too, that's also another factor. So, an update from the Missouri Department of Conservation last. 
update was on September 30th. So fall color is starting. It's just very scattered in nature and it's starting to show reds and purples in some of the flowering dogwood, ash, burning bush, sumac, Virginia creeper, and some maples. So we're not really getting a lot of the yellows just yet because the native trees are still green. We'll show this weekly and again that information from the Missouri Department of Conservation. Temperatures right now are fairly uniform across the area. We're in about the mid 50s and temperatures won't be dropping much more into the overnight hours, maybe about five degrees. And that's because of that cloud cover. That cloud cover is going to lock in the heat of the day and keep those temperatures from dropping off so that early tomorrow morning we will not be as cool as we've been the last couple of days. Dry conditions on our Freeman Health First Alert Doppler radar, even though we have the clouds moving in. Uh, a few sprinkles can't be ruled out, but I think we are just way too dry to see any type of rain with the cloud cover that's moving in. And we will hold on to the clouds into the next couple of days. And that's because our overall pattern is beginning to change. We had the northwest flow from the jet stream bringing in Canadian cool air. Well, it's changing now. It's out of the southwest. And so we're going to begin to see a warm up. Anything under the jet stream usually stays a lot warmer. Notice this trough, though, off to our west, an upper level low pressure going to start moving this way. And that's when we'll see those rain chances increase later in the week. So again, more cloud cover is expected. The warming trend as well. We'll actually see highs back to 80 degrees by midweek. Rain chances holding off until Thursday and Friday. Future weather model shows the cloud cover tonight and through the day tomorrow. We may see a few peaks of sunshine, but overall lots of clouds. A little bit more sunshine is expected into the day on Tuesday. But again, those rain chances increasing for Thursday and Friday. So here are some details now with your KSN forecast from your local weather authority. We will be in the upper 40s tonight, so mostly cloudy. Not as cool as where we've been over the last several days. 70 the high tomorrow in Joplin with cloudy skies. Temperatures warmer by to than today by just a couple degrees. 70 in southwest Missouri. Again, getting a warmer start to the day. Sky staying mostly cloudy. In southeast Kansas tomorrow, low 70s, cloudy and warmer. These temperatures still a little bit below normal. And 74 in northeast Oklahoma, mostly cloudy. Temperatures getting back to seasonable there. Here's your extended forecast. And we warm up to the mid 70s on Tuesday, 80 Wednesday. Still keeping around a lot of clouds, partly sunny skies. 81 on Thursday, chance for some showers and storms. And then showers are still possible on Friday. We will see our temperatures cool off a little bit with that cold front. Back to the low to mid 70s Saturday and Sunday. And Featuring more sunshine there. You can always keep track of the latest weather forecast. You can see that online just by logging onto our website. You can find that at fourstateshomepage.com. So a beautiful weekend. Changes mm -hmm. are coming now, but a little bit warmer temperatures and hopefully some rain later in the week. Yeah, overall not a bad forecast. Not at all. All right, thanks so much, Stacey. We appreciate it. Turning now to sports, Eric Connett joining us. And of course, another frustrating day for Chiefs fans. Yeah, pretty tough to win a football game when you can't score a oh. touchdown. The Chiefs could not do that today, but the Rams were facing John Brown and the Arizona Cardinals great game so we'll have that coming up also the Royals look to nail down the best record in the American League on this final day of the regular season and next a homecoming to remember at Pitt State more reaction to yesterday's huge comeback win against Missouri Western coming up and now sports with KSN sports director Eric Kinnett the rough early schedule continued for the Chiefs. Last week it was at Green Bay. Today a trip to Cincinnati to take on the 3-0 Bengals. And Cincinnati took an early 14-3 lead. And the Chiefs offense consisted of a bunch of field goals today. How about seven field goals from Cairo Santos, a club record. Meanwhile, the Bengals were doing this. Andy Dalton facing a third and 11, throwing downfield and a diving catch by Brandon Tate. Marcus Peters didn't touch him, so Tate gets in the end zone a 55 yard play 21 to 12 Cincinnati later third quarter Chiefs facing a third and 30 Travis Kelsey gets the catch but he fumbles Bengals take over inside the 10 they later score the Chiefs dropped a one and three losing to the Bengals today 36 21. Rams in Arizona to take on John Brown and the 3 0 Cardinals. Arizona fumbled the opening kickoff, and St. Louis makes them pay. Nick Foles to Tavon Austin. 12 yard touchdown, 7 0 Rams. John Brown, the former Pitt State star, had a good day. Seven catches for 75 yards, including this one in the second quarter. Then the very next play, Carson Palmer throwing deep to John Brown. But the Rams have double coverage in Janoris Jenkins makes the acrobatic interception in the end zone. Another look here. What a play here by the Rams. Jump ahead of the fourth quarter. Rams leading at 17-15. Nick Foles 
coming up here with a pump fake. Then going to hit Tavon Austin for another touchdown. Rookie Todd Gurley, what a day for him. 19 carries for 146 yards. And the Rams go on the road and hand Arizona their first loss. 24-22. Rams improved 2-2. Two two. Well, Pitt State has been living dangerously the last two weeks, but maybe danger is their middle name. Pitt trailed Missouri Western 27-7 at the half. But the Gorillas regrouped and pulled off the home homecoming comeback to win it 31-27. Jamal Tyler scored the go-ahead touchdown with under two minutes to go. The Gorilla D pitched a shutout in that second half to do their part. Pitt has proven to be a comeback team. They trailed at Fort Hayes State last Saturday before rallying back for that win, too. You know, there's a lot of fighters in this on this team. Um, you know, we're never going to give up, and that's a really good football team, Mo West is. And uh, just to pull off a win like that, it's huge. It's huge for our momentum. It's huge for our confidence and big win for us. Our motto now is just shut up and play. Uh, we know what we got to do, um, and then we just got to execute. Um, and second half, we got a great job of execution. And we'll talk more Pitt State football with the Tim Beck Show after the newscast. Missouri Southern had a rough trip to Warrensburg yesterday as the Lions lost to Central Missouri 54 to 10. The Mules had over 700 yards of offense, a school record for them. Southern started the game with TJ Fleeton at quarterback, but in the second quarter they made a change going with Kyle Keller. And Coach Denver Johnson had this to say about that decision. Well, we were talking about making a change there. He was really struggling, threw some bad balls early in the ball game, uh, threw some a couple in the turf and had some uh, poor reads and just some poor execution. So we were kind of talking about, and we'd been talking, the other boy had been practicing well, and we thought he deserved a chance to get into the ball game at some point in time. Then TJ took a big hit, wasn't injured, but took a big hit, was a little shook up. We thought that was the right time maybe to go ahead and give Kyle some, some opportunity. And, you know, he went in there and looked a little better. Baseball, final day of the regular season. The Royals looking to nail down the best record in the American League. Second inning, Alex Gordon with two on. Doubles to right, part of a three-run second inning for Kansas City. Third inning, Salvador Perez crushes this pitch. A two-run homer, his 21st, and the Royals take care of business, winning at 6-1. to one. That gives the Royals the best record in the American League at 95-67. and 67. The Royals will have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Kansas City will face either the Yankees or the Astros in a best-of-five series starting Thursday at Kauffman Stadium. The Cardinals, their playoff journey begins Friday at home against either the Cubs or the Pirates. And again, after the newscast, we're going to recap that exciting Pitt State comeback win on the Tim Beck Show here coming up. All right, we look forward to it, Eric. Yeah. Thanks so much. We've got more KSN Local News at 10 after this. And finally this evening, a family in Monrovia, California, had their 20-pound French Bulldog to thank for ridding their house of bears. And by the way, yes, it was all caught on camera. Check this out. On Friday, two bears wandered onto the property when the family guard dog confronted them. Now, being outnumbered didn't deter him, oh the Bulldog. God as it quickly went after the bears and scared them off the property. Note to self, get a bulldog. Wow, he's like that's not interesting even, though. Yeah, well, I'm sure he's barking and that bear's yeah. like, nope, mm-mm, get interesting. off. All right. Well, Stacey has one last look at our forecast. Exactly. We've really got another nice week expected. Temperatures will be warmer. We'll see a few more clouds. All right, Stacey, thanks so much. That's our news for now. And don't forget, more local news stories can be found on fourstateshomepage.com. Have a great evening and we'll see you tomorrow.